Richard Corsi is one of the world's best bowlers. He proved it once again by winning his third World Indoor Singles title in 1993. Yet his previous world title win was equally significant. What difference did winning the world title in 1991 make to your life, Richard? Oh, it made a vast difference. Dude. I got so much out of it. So many people um, were looking at me in a different light. You know, and one of the first times they were saying, you know, oh, well, it's just one of the number of Scots that's won the world title. And uh, here I was winning it for a second time, and it gave me so much satisfaction getting it the second time. What do you think at home? Is that bowl at the bottom of the picture in the count? Does it give Ian Schuback a set winning lie? Can Corsi draw a bowl to within 18 inches to win the championship? given the chance to draw within 18 inches for the championship he's done it one shot to the young scott congratulations from ian Schubert. richard corsi has won the world indoor singles title for the second time did you enjoy winning it more the second time than the first yeah very much so yeah i enjoyed it a lot um, it sort of put me into uh, the tony alcock and david bryant league having been you know the only non-Englishmen to have won it more than once, so I was really pleased winning it a second time. Corsi was born in 1966 and took up bowls as a 12-year-old. He immediately showed promise and was club champion at the Craig and Tinney Club in Edinburgh at just 16. Since then, he has gone on to win three World Indoor and one World Outdoor title, two Commonwealth Games singles bronze medals, and tournaments in Hong Kong and Australia, as well as all over the British Isles. He lives outside Edinburgh with his wife Suzanne and young son Cameron. How did you begin bowling, Richard? Did your parents play, for example? Well, they didn't do it, in fact. It was the other way about. Um, we went up to the park and it was closed where we used to play football. And they were all saying, you know, let's go in and have a game of bowls with all these old guys. Um, unfortunately, I was a bit eccentric because I enjoyed the game. They were playing football in the park next door and I was playing with all these old guys at the bowling, you know, so it took a fair old bit of stick. But now, um, it's certainly, I'm reaping the benefits now from practising with all these old guys. Did you find that you had a, a natural talent for the game right from the start? Did you pick up a ball and found that you could get it close? Yeah, I, I did. I, I picked it up and it, you know, I said, this feels OK. You know, and it seemed an easy game. I know, I know it's not now. I understand it all. It's quite difficult. You left school and, and joined the post office. As, as you said, that was probably a, a good path to follow because it did give you the time to, to play bowls. It did, actually. You know, it, it isn't it the ideal situation that your parents look for you to become a postie. You know, I think that everybody always expects you to do better. But on hindsight, looking back, um, I'm probably a, a major organisation that's supported me through my successes in bowls. Certainly difficult at the beginning, but um, they're fully supported of, of me now. So you didn't have any formal coaching or, or teaching, uh, and yet I think Jimmy Davidson uh, played quite a large part at that yeah. time, didn't he? It was really strange because when we were, I think it was about 14, 15, um, I could play balls and I thought, um, you know, that was it. I didn't need any coaching. And when I was selected to play in the, the Guinness School of Sport um, for a week with uh, Hugh Duff, who also had won the World Championship, I immediately the reaction was, I don't need coaching. You know, this is ridiculous. But I went to the coaching course and it's probably the most, um, I could honestly say I learnt more that week and I'd learnt in all the times I'd been practising through Jimmy Davison's techniques. We're about to see you coaching bowls, Richard. Where did you go to do that? Uh, we chose Fintry because the club was so supportive and letting us use their facilities. It was also a nice village and a nice setting, so we found it an attractive venue to go to. Hello, Kenneth. Hello. Welcome to Fintry. I believe you're an absolute beginner. Good. Julie, welcome. No. Beginner? Yeah. Great. Alan? No. Beginner? No. You have some experience? No. So you're obviously looking for a little bit more? No. Well, I just want you to relax today, enjoy yourself, and we'll have an enjoyable day. First thing in the game is the mat. Now, if we take the mat, okay? If I could excuse you a minute, Kenneth. The mat on all occasions, will always be placed six foot 
to the front of the mat from the edge of the ditch. And this is generally indicated by a T, which we can see clearly here. Front of the mat onto the T. Okay? Okay, we've placed the mat now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to deliver the jack. Now, Julie, if you could come onto the mat. That's fine. Just relax. Okay, and I'll place the jack into your hand. Okay? That's fine. Now, if you could deliver the jack to me, Julie, just go for my feet. Right, okay then. This time, okay, I want you to take a step forward, okay? You have the, you have the jack bouncing and actually deliver the jack so you're going to walk, okay? Good. No noise. Okay, Julie, this time, if you could keep your head up, look at me, nice delivery of the jack, right down on your knee, straight to my foot. On you go. Good. Well done. Nice and relaxed on the mat, Alan. Okay, Alan, this time, once you've delivered the jack, we're wanting you to centre it once it's delivered. Okay, Alan. Give Julie clear hand signals on centering the jack. Bear in mind, you're aiming up with the back marker. Clear signals. Okay. We've all established the bowls that we, want, that we have selected, okay? And you're all happy with the bowls that you have. As a simple test, just to make sure that the bowls that we have selected are comfortable in our hands, okay? So if we just slowly go down, put your hand on the top of the bowl and just slowly pick it up, okay? Now just hold it there, okay? Give it a little shake. Okay, we all feel pretty comfortable with that? Okay, that's a simple test and that's indicating that we're all comfortable with, it, with the size of the bowl, okay? We're now going to move on to the grip and there's two types of grip. First of all, there's the claw grip where the thumb is placed on the top of the bowl Secondly, we have the cradle grip, where the thumb is on the lower part of the bowl, and the bowl is actually in the palm of the hand. That grip I wouldn't recommend to any of you, because you have no feeling, and there's no sort of sensitive part that are holding the bowl. It's just basically rolling off the palm of your hand. So we're going to just place the bowls into your hand, Kenneth, just to see how comfortable you are with the grip, okay? I'll just place it in. Okay, now you take a grip now. It's important that the bowl is perpendicular so that it will come away very clean when you're delivering the bowl. And that's pretty good, Kenneth. Okay? That's fine, thanks. Okay, Julie. Just screw up the bowl. Nice and relaxed. Okay? Relax your arm. You comfortable with that? Okay? Okay, Alan. Same again. Just open your fingers, just relax. Okay? Just open that finger. Okay, and just stretch out. There we see where the bowl is perpendicular, perfectly level. It's not going to go away with a wobble. If Alan was holding it like this, then obviously the bowl is going to go away with a wobble and he's not going to get a true result. So there again, perpendicular, nice solid grip. Finger, a little bit on the top. And he's ready to go. Well, um, we've established a good delivery with the jack. And it's exactly the same with the bowl. It may feel a bit different. You have a, it's a bit larger object. But it's exactly the same principle. Okay? You're going to deliver the bowl down the line. And hopefully directly at my foot there. Okay, give it a go. Good. Good. Okay. Let's just see that again. Well done, Alan. And don't worry whether that's finished, but that's pretty good. You'll see that that is exactly on the line. It just didn't have enough weight, but in all respects, you were planting my foot and not to the jack. And that's a pretty good first attempt. There's a lot of people who'd be proud of that. Okay? Kenneth, do you want to come on and show your first bowl? 
Okay? Again, exactly the same as you were doing with the jack. Okay? It's just the same principle. Nice tolerating of foot. Good. And again. Just take your time now. Just relax. That's good. Well done. That's good for a first time, Kenneth. Okay, Julie, your big turn. Again, I'll, I'll say it again. I'm repeating myself. Exactly the same as what you're doing with the jack. Okay? Julie, try and, try and take a wee bit bigger step the next time. Okay? Good. going to be impressed with this one. Well done. Great delivery. First balls. Superb. A lot of people will be proud of that. Just one thing, Kenneth. If you could come back onto the mat with a ball again. Okay? Now we're just going to get you on the mat and just put the ball in your hand. Okay? Now put it up there. Now, your ball, I don't know if you noticed, but it went away with a wobble. Okay? And that's all we do again, the grip. It's your small finger that's obviously causing the wobble because it's so far round the bowl, okay? So we'll just try and move that down there a bit and move your thumb up there. Now, does it feel comfortable? No. Right, okay. Position yourself on the mat. And again, deliver to my foot. Better, good. Excellent. Well done. And that's your wobble cured. Okay, well done. The bowl has discs, and the small disc at all times must be to the inside, the large disc on the outside. Likewise, if we're playing the backhand, a small disc to the inside, large to the outside. I'll just demonstrate first on the forehand with the large disc to the outside. Again on the backhand, no difference, large disc to the outside, small to the inside. The bias which brings the ball back to the centre line is determined by the shape in which the ball is moulded. One side of the ball is made wider than the other. It has nothing to do with any weights added to the ball, as so many non-bowlers seem to think. One of the world's largest bowl makers, Henselite, have their UK factory near Cumbernauld in Scotland. Originally, bowls were made from a form of wood called lignum vitae, but nowadays it's a thermosetting plastic, which in its raw condition comes as a granulated powder. This powder is then weighed and preheated, and then formed into shape by compression at high temperature. It is then allowed to cool slowly, for 24 hours. The bias and balance of the bowls is produced on a computer controlled lathe to a high degree of accuracy. A second pass is made and then the grooves are added, a series of concentric circles. After initial testing, the bowls are polished and engraved. And then, of course, every set of bowls has to be tested to ensure that they conform to the specifications of the World Bowling Board. As the test table proves, this set appears to have a consistent bias on the backhand draw. Try the backhand ourselves. We've played one on the floor. So, Alan, if you'd like to come forward. Okay, take the position for the backhand. Okay.
What happened there? We couldn't get that one away quick enough, eh? Let me see how you're holding it. You feel as though it was, you were dying to get that out of your hand. Okay, just relax your hand. Okay? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. Slow it down a bit. Take it easy. Look at your aim point. Nice little around the back hand. Position yourself first on the mat. That's it. next point we're going on to is the shoulder. Now the shoulder is the breaking point of the ball where the speed's coming off the ball about two thirds of the way up the green and the ball starts to break. That is called the shoulder. I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to try and demonstrate anyway, and I'm going to deliver the ball and watch for the ball turning two thirds of the way. That's basically the point we're going to be aiming for and that is called the shoulder. There's a ball breaking there. And that part is the shoulder. We've now marked the shoulder with a piece of white card. And that now should be our aiming point. And I'll try and demonstrate that as best as I can for you. There we go. Over the aiming point and smack on line. All right, Alan, we've now established the aiming point. Now's your chance. Deliver your ball over the piece of white card and hopefully we'll get it first time here. Excellent. Well done. Great. Good effort, Kenneth. Yeah, well done. Julie? Well done, Julie. We'll certainly not say much about the delivery, but well done. I explained to you earlier about the shoulder, but the majority of bowlers generally use a naming point on the bank. I'm going to try and demonstrate using the cone, the aiming point, trying to get the aiming point, and finishing back into the centre of the jack. If I get that aiming point, my ball should finish in the centre line. I'll try my best to demonstrate that. Got my aiming point. I'm quite happy with that. Coming back to the middle. Back into the centre of the rink. One of the most important things on the aiming point is keeping your head perfectly still. And it's the same in golf and snooker. You often hear people lifting their head and taking their eye off the shot. It's exactly the same in bowls. Focus clearly on the aiming point, put it into the back of your mind, and away for the aiming point. So, Alan, if you could demonstrate, focus clearly on your aiming point, and away we go. Very good, Alan. Turn them well. Hit the point. Excellent. Got the point, Julie. Back into the centre. Oh, terrific. Well done. Good. Yep, you've got the point. Just 
a little over strength. You can see it coming back into the centre because you managed to get the correct aiming point. Well done. Picking up the story of your early days again, Richard, 83 and 84 were particularly successful, weren't they, with Scottish and British junior indoor and outdoor titles? Yeah, I think that was, it was always my ambition to win a, a national title. And obviously the junior one's the first one to aim when you move into that category. And I won it in the first attempt in 1983 at the minimum age. But what are your memories of the Commonwealth Games? Um, good experience. I, I gained a lot of experience in '86 that I, I use now. You know, I looked at the round robin system and shots and things like that, which I never considered when I was actually playing in 1986. So I can honestly say, having get, been given the chance in '86, I've got a hell of a lot of experience through that. How much does it mean to you to, to play for your country to actually represent Scotland? Oh, I think it means a vast amount. You know, everybody likes to play for their country. Um, yeah, it means a lot to me. Are you very much a, a home boy? Are you happiest in Edinburgh? Um, I think when you're when you're bowling, you've got your appearances, your commitments. Everybody says, you know, it's nice to get out. Well, for me, it's nice to get back home because I'm very rarely in my house. And what about Edinburgh as a as a home city? Is it special to you, or could you be happy anywhere? Um, well, we've just recently moved, and we just moved a mile outside Edinburgh, and I was really apprehensive about moving outside Edinburgh. I wanted to live in Edinburgh. I was adamant. Um, but having said that, we're not that far. Um, yeah, I like Edinburgh. The scoring system in the game of bowls is very simple. Here we have blue bowl and blue bowl. These two blue bowls are nearer than any of the other four red bowls. Therefore, blue shall score two shots. A very easy scoring system. Here's another illustration of that simple scoring system. In this example, black is lying three shots. He has three bowls closer to the jack than the nearest yellow. But yellow, with his final delivery, changes things completely. Out goes the black, and now yellow scores one. The nearest bowl is yellow, and it's one shot. And that is one of the attractions of the game. Now back to Fintry. Julie and Ken have already played their very first end of singles, and Richard has challenged Alan. And there's a surprise, too, for the world champion. A very good opening ball from young Alan McCall. What can Richard do by way of reply? Another good ball, but Alan lies the shot. Alan adds a second. And since that ball lands in the forehand draw, Richard has to change his hand and come in on the backhand. And he plays it well. Alan's third, just a little under-greened. Richard still in the backhand. Not quite the shot, though. And Alan, the local lad from Fintray, confirms his promise as a real bowling prospect with yet another splendid delivery. Once again, Alan, you've played another great end here and you've got me in a bit of trouble. I do have a bowl left, and the reason I brought you to the head is to have a look at the options. And the correct shot here, really, this is my own two balls here. The correct shot is to play enough weight to turn this ball either onto yours or onto the jack, with myself having the best back ball. So I'm going to try from the other end enough weight to lift this ball, hopefully get a result. If not, I'll have to declare you the winner. Well, as you can see, Alan, you've pushed me into playing an extremely difficult shot there. Fortunately, I've come out with a result. So, congratulations on the way you've performed today.
the 1991 World Indoor Singles Final. Corsi against Australia's Ian Shubank. This man has got to change it. He's gone a bowl wider now. He wants almost the same length as his previous bowl, and he'll rest out Richard Corsi's shot ball. And he's very close to doing it. Never mind resting the shot ball out as he reached the jack, and that is the shot. Brilliant stuff. The quality of play in the 1991 final was outstanding. Both players continually outdoing the other. Good coaching and long hours of practice were paying off on the biggest stage of all. Corsi's forehand, going for the trail. Can he get back? I think he's just about done it. Oh, so close. Look where he's finished. Almost in perfect. Brilliant exhibition of balls. Oh, Carol. Hello, Richard. Good to meet you. Hello, Rosie. Richard, nice to see you. Hello, Andy. Hi, Doc. Nice to meet you. Hello, Maurice. Nice to meet you, Richard. Welcome today to Fintry. And today, we're going to have a look at your delivery actions. That's the first thing we're going to start with today. Every bowler's delivery action is very unique in their own right. Many coaches will tell you that your left hand, when delivering the ball, must be placed onto your left knee. That really is incorrect. I'll demonstrate to you, I actually deliver a ball. My left hand is nowhere near my knee. I'll just demonstrate to you. As you can see, I'll use my left hand to balance me here. I'm perfectly balanced, and I'm quite comfortable with that. So what's right for one is not right for another. In the game of bowls at the top level, about this much is physical application, the rest is mental application, and it's about this much physical application that must be correct. I want to make sure that you have that bit correct, I'll have a look at your deliveries, if there's anything I can correct, I'll try my best to do so, okay? Would you like to come onto the mat? Good, good balance. One on the back now, Carl. That's good, Carol. Nice timing, well balanced. Just a slight bump, but that's something we'll be able to correct in the not too distant future. But all in all, well done. Okay, Andy? Same again, one on the four and one on the back. One on the back. Okay, Andy. The only thing I can see is that your head is looking down at the ground and then back up again. So therefore, you're lifting your head on the shot. Try and focus yourself onto a picture, something on the bank, some aiming point. That will clearly go in. You'll focus it. It will help your momentum, it will help your movements, your head will stay still, but that's something that we're going to work on. Okay? Okay, Rosie? Good delivery, nice follow through. Well done, Rosie. Well balanced, nice delivery, and a lovely follow through. Well done. We don't have much to correct there. Okay. Okay, Murray, if you could come in, thanks. Okay, same again. One on the forehand, one on the backhand. Hand on the back. Again, Murray, that's a very good delivery. You're well balanced. Nice clean follow through. Not a lot can go wrong with it. Okay, well done. Andy, if you could come back in. I feel as though we have a bit to do with Andy. We're going to see if we can correct the movement on your head. 
We've now established the aiming point, OK? If you can keep staring at that aiming point, there's absolutely no way your head will move. So it's staring, 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 picking the aiming point up. Your head won't move, OK? Have a shot. OK. Staring, staring. You're Andy. OK, Andy, does that feel any better for you? I felt OK. Right, then. That's good, then. If I could just bring you all in at this point, and uh, we're going to move on to the cluster exercise. Um, this is a, a valuable exercise. Holes is adjustment. OK, we're adjusting from one ball to the next, on to the next. But before we can do that, it's important that we can repeat what we've already done. In this exercise, I'm going to try and demonstrate first. We're going to try and get a cluster at the other end of the green just to show the repetition of the shots one after the other. OK? OK, on. OK, I've now set my mark on where I want the other three to finish. And I'll try and give you a commentary on how they're doing. Yeah, that's the second one away. That doesn't feel too bad. Maybe shorter length. But on the line. Hoping to gain a yard on that one. Again, shorter length, finishing beside the second one. Again, on the line. And again, that doesn't feel too bad. On the line, back into the centre. And that's a reasonable wee cluster. OK? OK, that's you set your mark, Carl. Again. Three bowls later, what improvement has Carol made? Good line. Good weight. Certainly going to be nearly your first one this time. That's a fair, fair line on all of them. Rosie has already played, so now it's Murray's turn. Better Murray. On target here. That's good, mate. Yard over. That's good stuff. I think you're blaming yourself. You aren't that bad. That's very good, Murray. Well done. Good stuff. What we'll do now is we'll go up and we'll just see how close the clusters have gathered, okay? Now, as we can see, it just wasn't as easy as we thought. I've been pretty fortunate. I've managed to get four here. And if I was playing in a game and playing to that, I'd be quite happy that I was managing to put these four together. Can I just say, Murray, for a first attempt, this is Murray's here. One, two, three, four. That's a very good first attempt. All within a fairly small radius, a very good attempt. Again, Carol, if we've just pointed out yours, one, two, three. Three nice balls. Fairly good group. Unfortunately, this one down here, okay, that could easily be tension. You know, just tension up in the wrist, and that's easily just slacking off. Feel free and relax. Good group. Rosie, 
Now, there's quite a variation in roses here. But as we can see, they're all on a perfectly good line. And that's good, Rosie. You're picking the line very good. Again, quite a distance, but not bad for a first attempt. Um, all in all, quite a good exercise. All right, Murray. This first adjustment exercise, I'm going to play my first ball behind the jack. I'm going to then increase my weight with each of the following balls. You'll then do the same. The one with the shortest distance from first ball to last ball will declare the winner. Okay, I'll try oh. my best, yep. Okay. I'll be brave and I'll go first, okay? Right. I want my first hole just behind the jack. Okay, I want to increase on that, not by too much, just in case you beat me. I failed to increase at all. Again, this time I've been successful in increasing. Just past the balls. That's quite a good distance. I'll consider that a good adjustment. Fairly happy with that. Okay, Murray, on you go. That'll be quite hard to beat, I think. I don't know. He's playing well today. How's that feel, Murray? I don't, like, I don't think I sent that one as further as the first one. You're back to the clusters here. Aye. Yeah, you're looking for two feet on your last one. How's it feeling? Felt a bit better, but... I think you've done think the same again. I think it's tighter. Okay, come on in, Murray. Two feet. Two feet in your next one. That's more than two feet. <laughs> That's a big adjustment. Two yards. <laughs> we'll go and have a look at that, eh? Okay. Generally, in a course of a game, you often find that the jack is moved, and you generally do have to adjust you know, by margins. And that's um, part of the reason for the exercise. As you'll see here, I've increased by about two feet here, and again about a foot here. And the second one was pretty poor, but quite happy with that as an adjustment. Here, same pace, Murray. This one would have actually reached further, yeah. obstructed by your own bow. And again, a very large adjustment. The jack's <laughs> been moved quite considerably yeah. for the last one. All in all, a good exercise to practice. In 1988, you married Suzanne, Richard. Uh, had you been going out with her long? Um, I started going out with Suzanne in 1986, and uh, obviously she followed me at the Commonwealth Games and things like that, so she knew what she was in for when uh, she was watching the bowls. <laughs> was she a bowler herself, or was she interested in bowls? Um, no, she wasn't a bowler, but she certainly took a keen interest, and she supported me fully. And what about now? Is she? Well, she's obviously your biggest fan, I take it, but does she come and watch you play? Well, we've got the wee guy now, you know, so it's a wee bit difficult. But certainly when we were first going out and when we first got married, um, Suzanne was everywhere, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, all the places. And as you said, you've now got young Cameron. How has fatherhood changed you, Richard? Oh, it's great, Biggie. Um, I really enjoy it. 
you know, you look forward to coming home and seeing them. Hence the reason I didn't want to go away as much, but if you have to, you have to. Does he recognise you on television? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yet. No. You've also had a change in your occupation, really, haven't you? Let, let's talk about your relationship with the post office and Royal Mail. How, how did all that come about? Um, it came about this year. It went through a, a sort of change, you know, as in all businesses are changing. And they got me off the streets about three years ago, as from Dover and Mail, and used me on a sort of appearance line on a PR role. It sounds the perfect setup because every top sportsman is looking for, for good sponsorship these days, I suppose. And it seems to have worked out well for you. Yeah, it has. Um, certainly looking at things in the future, you know, the game of balls doesn't look to be on the up, it's on the decline on the television side of things. So it's something to fall back on if anything goes wrong in the, in the game. Talking about big television tournaments, let's talk about your first world title in 1989. What are your memories of, of that week at Preston? Um, I certainly didn't expect to win as comfortably as I did because obviously Wally had been queued off the previous champion in the semi-final. I was expecting a difficult game. But um, I played my own game. I was playing well. Um, I never considered I was playing Wally Wood. You know, I just got on with my, what I had to do myself. And do you have to do that in the green, Richard? Just yeah. block out who your opponent is and whether you like him or dislike him? Yeah, you've got to be pretty evil on the green, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay having a drink with him after it if you've won and... If you've got beaten, you know, it doesn't matter, but when you're on the green, you've just got to get away from them, you know. You hate them as much as you can. 1990 also took you to the Commonwealth Games in Auckland, and, and a very special thrill before the, the Games even began. Yeah, I was uh, selected to hold the, the flag for Scotland, um, and with Edinburgh being the Games in 86, Scotland were the first team to walk in to the stadium in New Zealand, and obviously I was the very first person to walk in. It was a great honour for me holding that flag. We're now going to talk about singles practice. And I say singles because we get more practice playing singles, we play more balls, and it's much more beneficial, I think. When we're playing a singles game, if I'm playing a singles game, I'll try and set myself a target. You know, I'll have a purpose to play for. For instance, if my opponent's first ball, and I would deliberately place this so as I would give myself a target to beat, we have the side toucher, Okay, which is quite easy to beat. We have the back toucher, again, easy to beat. But hardest of all is the front toucher. Okay, that is a difficult shot to play. And many people will be rather rash at that, have a bit go. The real, the real way to play it is to be rather conservative. One, get one close for two reasons. If we have one close, we're not going to lose a count. And secondly, if it is by the jack, it's in a receiving position to receive the jack. So if I was happen to put my second ball into here, okay, one, I'm not going to lose a count, and two, my second ball coming up, if I was to touch it, like so, I'm now in a receiving position and I've scored the shot. Without any question, if you're playing singles practice, set up a front toucher and give yourself a target of four balls at trying to beat that without driving. And it's quite a good exercise for you. One of the things about practicing in singles is to put a condition and give yourself a target to beat. One of the conditions that I like is using the back edge of the ditch, drawing to the edge, using that as our jack, nearest to the edge of the ditch without going in, is going to score shots. The reason being, during the course of a game, the jack always ends up in the ditch at some point in the game. And when we go to play to draw to the edge of the ditch, nine times out of ten, we're dropping in. The reason why, we don't practice. So therefore, if we put this purposeful practice into place, hopefully, if we're practicing that, we'll be able to stay on the ditch as soon as we can. We're going to try that, okay? Rosie, if you'd like to play a ball, Draw into it near as the edge of the ditch as you possibly can. Okay, Rosie, speak to me. I think it's a bit heavy. In fact, I'm certain it's a bit heavy. No. It doesn't look bad to me. Thought I'd thrown it quite heavy. That's absolutely superb. Well done. How are we doing, Carl? 
Um, certainly bumped it, but uh, I don't think it's in the dip. Good. Well, that's great stuff. Okay, Murray. Come on, the women are taking you to the cleaners here. <laughs> How are we doing, Murray? It was quite good this time. Good stuff, Murray. Follow that, as they say. How are we doing, Andy? By the error. Oh, there. Stay on in. She okay, Rosie. How about this time? Feels better this time. Is that? That's yep. good then. That's because it's not so far. <laughs> That's right, your first one you thought you were actually in, yeah. and you weren't in at all. Okay, Carol. That's in the ditch at the side. Oh dear. <laughs> right, Murray. Line. How's the pace? I think it should be okay. You certainly look very good to you. This is excellent stuff. Great stuff, Murray. Well done. How are you feeling, Andy? Better than the last one, I think. Very good, Andy. Excellent stuff, mate. Well done. Great stuff. It's always important that when you do go out to practice in singles that you put some type of condition. There's no point in going out and just playing away and just getting fed up. If you can actually displace a jack, play one on the forehand, one on the backhand, short mat, long mat, you're giving yourself some type of challenge because these occasions always arise in a game, whether it's you doing it or your opponent. And nine times out of ten, it's your opponent, and you're generally the one that hasn't practiced. So I would stress, if you're going to practice, put some type of condition and give yourself a challenge. The challenge facing the player playing yellow here is that he lies three shots down at a vital stage of the game. Which shot to play? Well, the answer clearly is the drive. The aim is to pick up the jack, take it into the ditch, and since the driving bowl is obviously a toucher, it counts, and that's two, or possibly even three, on a measure. This is an exercise where we're going to practice driving. During the course of a game, it's generally all drawing, and generally never have to use the drive, but there's always one occasion that we're going to have to drive. And it's nice to have that shot in your armour. And that's why, when we're in the practice, we should practice driving. I've set up this small exercise, never, ever drive to a bare jack. Always try and put something beside it. Make it about a two and a half foot target on most occasions. We have this area here and if we're in this area all the time we're doing very well and obviously if we're not we're in a little bit of trouble. So the ball coming in, we're going to get a result here, going to get a result here. We're going to try this exercise, as I said we're going to put the balls up the other end and we're going to try it from here. All right, Rosie, Murray, we're now going to just take it easy here, Rosie. You can't wait, eh? See, there's a bit of devilment in you. We're now going to play the driving practice. This time, as I've explained before, each person driving finds their own speed that they're comfortable using. You don't have to go hell for leather at it. Whatever you find comfortable, that's the speed to use. On you go, Rosie. Good effort. 
little variation this time. On you go again, Rosie. Deserve another shot for that. It was a good effort. Good. Very good. Well done. Excellent. Well done. Okay, Murray, show us it wasn't a fluke. Well done again. Great stuff. That's good going. Well done. There's one thing that I would like to stress, is that when we are driving, wherever our left foot goes, I'll try and demonstrate it, the body always follows. Okay, so if we get position correct on the mat, generally try and use your right foot at what you're going to aim at. Left foot forward, the body always follows through. Therefore, you're getting your balance, you're getting your correct line. Good point to remember. I'm going to have one more try at this. And I'll try and demonstrate me going through on it. Okay? I'll slow it down a wee bit. Dive in there. Backswing and true. Okay? Simple as that. <laughs> okay? When playing in the 1991 World Singles against Dean Schubach, I was faced with a situation. Having lost the first set after being 6-0 down, got back to 6 all and lost at 7-6. In the second set, I was faced with this situation here, as we can see. I'd played three very good balls within two or three inches. Dean Schubach had driven, put my chalker into the ditch, which is marked with the red marker. Jack also again with the white marker, and I had three options which to play. I could have drawn the shot for an easy two, which I thought was the easiest shot at the time. Secondly, I could have driven the ball off and scored three shots. However, I did opt to play, which I think is probably one of the most difficult shots, and that was a controlled weight shot. Bearing in mind I was 3-2 ahead, if I'd kept my ball on the green, I was going to score four, and I was going to win the set. I'm going to demonstrate for you how I played the shot and hopefully the end result will be shown. The blue bull has now moved into the ditch and is now a dead bull, which leaves me holding the four shots which are required to win the set. I was very happy and it was a great achievement for me to play that shot so successfully. And here's another look at that marvellous Richard Corsi bowl. Remember that the yellow bowl in the ditch is a toucher and therefore counts. The only shoeback bowl on the green is the black. If Corsi can remove it and stay on the green, he scores four. And that, of course, is exactly what he did. The black bowl, not a toucher, so it's dead and is removed, and four shots remain for yellow, and Richard Corsi has gone for the all-or-nothing shot and made it count, just as he did in the 1993 final. In that final, his opponent was Jim McCann, a fellow Scot who had played very well all week, but was trailing 2-1 in the final. And I think he's made one. And it's signaled by the umpire marker, and it is one. Brilliant. Corsi, of course, has the final bowl of the end. He's going to strike that bowl off for the championship. Got it! What a way to win the world title! The man who is known for his drawing ability in the end used firm tactics, a strike, taking a single bowl off the green for two shots, and those two shots give Richard Corsi the set, the match, and the championship, the world championship for the third time, 
and a first prize of £24,000. Morning, John. Good morning, Richard. Morning, morning Margaret. Richard, nice to meet you. Morning, Betty. Nice to meet you, Richard. Morning, morning Richard. Archie. How are you? Welcome to Fintry. Today we're going to do two exercises which I'm particularly keen on and I feel will probably benefit you in the future. Firstly, we're going to do the freezing of the head exercise. The reason it's frozen, the leads and seconds have played, we've froze the head at this stage. Reds at this position are one up, playing the last end. Blue's holding one. Archie, Margaret, use are reds. John, Betty, use are blue. Okay? Archie, it's now your third to play. Leads in second I've played, remember. Could you instruct Margaret what she's going to play? And just let me hear your opinion. Right, Margaret, uh, we're, we're one shot upon the game. What we can't afford to do is to turn that bull in for another shot. So what I'm wanting is a percentage shot here, and I'm asking you to play the backhand with enough weight to guarantee you reaching that ball. Mm -hmm. If you fall a bit tight, you've a chance of turning that into the head. If you fall further tight, you still, still could be a valuable bull in the head. Okay then, Archie, what shot are you asking Margaret to play then? I'm asking her to play a guaranteed length shot in the backhand. Margaret, are you happy with that shot? You, you want me to actually go to turn the ball, or am I just looking for the draw, which can either wick off that and get the shot, or trail it to get the two back balls? It's, you, it's a draw, draw, drawing weight to land two feet behind the jack. Okay, Margaret, I'm just going to pick up on that last shot that you said where you wanted to draw the shot 68 inches behind the jack, and I'll tell you why, because if you're playing the draw, looking at Archie's options, lifting the front ball into the head, if you were drawing, you wouldn't have enough pace to lift that in for the shot. I'm just going to ask your opposition skip, John, what shot would you not like them to play? Which I would not like them to play. Not like them to play. Well, I would not like the shot that Margaret was wanting to play, the draw around <laughs> behind the jack. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Betty? I was the same, because I feel if it lands in front of the red ball, it could end up shot. Right. Margaret's ball would end up shot, taking it from us. I'll tell you what, we're going to go with Margaret's shot, all right? because it seems to be the one that you're happier with. Well, I can see it Okay. The good news is we're going to be playing from this short <laughs> distance here. You're not going to go to the other end, okay? Right. So this mat here is for playing off the backhand. This mat here is for playing off the forehand. Margaret's elected to draw on the back. Pick your ball, Margaret, and draw us a shot. Good, well done. That has changed the head quite considerably. Red, having been one shot up playing this last end, now holding the shot. John, it's a totally different position for you now. You're one, one down in the game and one down in the head. What's your next option here? What are you going well, to ask Betty to play? I'd prefer Betty to play the backhand shot now with just a, about a yard of running onto it to take the jack possibly through to the, the, the between the, the two blue balls at the back through behind the head. Okay, Betty, can I bring you in on this? Stand in the middle. You're going to look at this from the centre, okay? What's your preferred shot here? Right, I would, I would play that backhand shot. Right. Coming up to try and touch the jack, you know, I'm just leaving it touched a wee bit towards one blue ball there. Bearing in mind, okay, red's one up. Short ball in front of you, you turn it in, two down, you lose the game. I think I would be quite confident playing the backhand to maybe get in front backhand of Marcus ball, because if I do touch the jack, it's going to go to my blue Well, ball if there. you're confident of playing it, Betty, you play it. John, that's nice instructions and nice encouragement. Yeah. I hope you would use that in a normal game. Okay. Okay, Archie. Mm. <laughs> Betty was over the pace, but again, she was in the area and she got a result. She's now removed your red ball and she's now in the position where she's lying two shots. You're now holding a match winning position. Again, you're now going to ask Margaret what shot she's going to play, what she's happy playing with, 
If you'd like to come back into the centre again, we'll discuss the shots which are available to us. Well, the, the come on, Betty, come and have a look at it. Just playing it. Uh, you could play exactly the same shot as you played the last time. If anything, it's slightly easier this time in, in that you've got a larger shoulder to hold. And that would be the shot I would opt for. We've got the other options that we spoke about before, but you played the last shot successfully. I would ask you to play that shot again. I, I would agree. It was the same shot. Yeah. Well done, Margaret. Good, sir. Okay, Betty, you selected a heavy shot. Mm -hmm. You can come onto the mat. This is your target area here. This is your own ball. You want enough weight to push this ball onto the jack or come through and take the jack yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Oh. Very unlucky. Two shots later, and does Archie agree that there's a shot on the forehand? Nice draw on the four. A nice draw on the four, and uh, I could draw. Actually, if I was <laughs> if it was Richard Corsi, I could draw just right behind him. Oh, I don't <laughs> think, <laughs> I think he'd be pretty unsuccessful at that. <laughs> Betty, come on and rescue your husband here. Margaret. Well, we're lying the shot, so I I wouldn't go near that at all, mm -hmm. and I feel John will go ditch ditch length again because he doesn't really have any other alternative. So I would draw between my own ball and the ditch as insurance okay, and for John playing a heavy ball. And you're not worried about getting... I don't want to go near that ball because we're lying and I couldn't see us making it any better than it is. Nicely played, Archie. Good stuff. Well done. Thank you. All right. Okay, John. When you come. <laughs> one down. One down on the end. What are you going to play? It's going to be the same shot as the last time. On the back? On the back hand to try and come off the blue ball and try and chip the red one out. You in agreement with that, Betty? <coughs> I'm in agreement with it. The only danger is if John touches the red ball, which is shot at the moment, the jack could bounce back and the red ball could also go if we've given them two shots. The game's against us. It is, Betty. It's We're against us. Some of you have just got to go for it. <coughs> From this angle, difficult shot, I would think, to, to get the shot out. Has he any other option? Mm -hmm. I don't see any other option. Maybe coming in off the blue ball, but very difficult, no. I would just go for the shot John suggests. Okay, John, on you go and play it. This time, you're going to the other end to play it. Okay? <laughs> I don't think you want this one back, John. Well done. John, well done. That was an excellent shot. I'd have been proud of that myself. Well done, John. Well done, John. Good ball. Well played. Thank you, Margaret. Well done, John. Thanks, Archie. Well done. I'd just like to say, John, that was an excellent way to finish. We've enjoyed the exercise. These have all played great shots. Red was one up playing that end. Blue now scoring one. A nice way to finish, a nice friendly draw. Okay, well done. You've now been playing bowls at the top level for very nearly 10 years. Do you still enjoy the game as much? Yeah, I enjoy it very much, Dougie. I think the day I stop enjoying it, I'll stop playing. And yet there must be more pressure on you now, surely. Yeah, there isn't, there isn't. Um, I've been world champion. I can always be sold on that fact. Um, Bob Sullivan and people were world champions 83, 84, and they're doing really well at the game now on the, the back of their world championship win. So you're confident about the future then? Um, certainly not on the tournament side of things, because obviously we don't have as many tournaments. But on other avenues within the game, yes, I am. So in other words, prize money is not enough to, to live on? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, definitely not. Um, I'd have to win the World Championship every single year. <laughs> is that disappointing? The fact that uh, perhaps there isn't quite the media, media interest and, and prize money available that there once was? Yeah, it is disappointing because it's uh, a well-played sport. A lot of people play it and it's gets good viewing figures on the television, so yeah, it is. What do you do away from the game? What are your, your hobbies? Yeah, well, I didn't have any until I moved down here. Um, I run a golf course here, so I felt I had no option but to try and take up the golf. So, 
I've tried the golf. No, you took the balls very quickly. You're not going to tell us that you've taken the golf just as quickly as well. No, it's a hard game. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me if I was the Green Ranger the other day. I was lifting that much turf. <laughs> what about other interests other than, than golf? Um, I've always played the organ. Um, I started this when I was about 12 years old and went to lessons for a few years. And, no, I'll have a wee dabble at the organ if I have time. Purely for your own amusement or do you play for friends? Oh no, well, it depends on the occasion, you know, it depends on which drink I've had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beth, if you could deliver the jack to me, please. In the Phantom 4 exercise, the four bowlers play a phantom match against Richard, who places his bowls in order to make it more difficult for the four okay. playing against him. Betty's opted for a full length this time. <clears throat> we'll take it back to the six foot line. Okay. I always play the first ball because it doesn't make sense if I play it second because I'll always have the last ball and I can place it where I want. So again. Okay, Betty. Okay, Betty. Two yards, Betty. Okay. The reason I'm going to place this ball where I'm placing it, Betty's just opted to play the backhand, putting a small degree of difficulty, just putting the ball on the line, but still enough room possibly for Betty to clear it. That ball's about two yards, about this much short. You can still play it, you can get round it. The easier shot is to draw. If you feel happier in that, Good try, Betty. This is a good back door. I'll just say to you there, Auntie, before Betty played that one, you gave her the choice, and I'm pleased you did because Betty was happier playing that side. That's a good point to remember. Keeping your playing partners happy keeps a better atmosphere within the rink. I'm now going to place this, the, my next ball. I'm going to make it count. I'm now holding three shots. Again, degree of difficulty, but not as difficult as the one I've previously placed. Right, Margaret, the shot's still the draw. It's still open in both hands. If you prefer this hand, that's probably the hand to play. This is a good bill coming into the area. Excellent ball, well played. Well done, Margaret. Great ball. That's a great ball under pressure. And it's important that you, again, you're encouraging Margaret, make her feel good, tell her well played, congratulate her, you know, and that makes her feel all the better for playing her next ball. Unfortunately, it was such a good ball, it's going to have to come away. <laughs> I've played another great ball in here. I've managed to come inside here. I've lifted the blue ball into this position. Again, I'm now holding three shots again. Now, the, the head's changed quite a bit now. We've still got the option that we could come in with a draw in that hand, which is a wee bit more difficult than your previous shot. You must play a yard on. Could I, could I just stop you there? When, when you say a yard, Archie, do you it mean exactly a yard at 36 inches? You know, what are you saying to mm. Margaret when you're asking her to play a yard? I mean really with weight, controlled weight. Controlled weight, so if she was playing controlled weight, she could possibly lose her ball in the ditch. Right. Okay? 36 inches described from this end. I would tell Margaret, you know, bearing in mind all these people in the other greens that's not going to be able to hear it, place the hand at 36 inches or a yard, near as possible. This is the way we want you to play, Margaret. If you're successful, you're not going to lose your ball. If unsuccessful, we're going to finish in this position here anyway. Right, I want you to play the bull with the weight, if it was finishing, it would finish in this point here. Coming inside the brown bull, no further than there. Ah, 
That was a good try. And you haven't lost your bull. Now again, Margaret has now, she's played a bull with that, she's opened it up. Yes. So therefore, it's, it's up to me to, to put that one back in. But again, Margaret, well done. The weight was good, just a little bit over. Nice line, a nice shot. I'm then going to put something back in here again. Well, Jock, I think probably the head's building up against him, so what do you think, Larry? Just, did, did you quite happy with controlled weight again coming in there? Well, again, don't lose your ball. Remember, bearing in mind, Jock, one, two, three against you. Yes. Okay? Sir. Yeah, the option is just to draw into the head through the hole, through the gap here. Yeah, you try that with the first one. Try that with the first dog. It's not, they're not going to lose your bull like that. Right. Well done. Nice ball. Well done, Margaret. Well done, ladies. That was a great yeah, first ball. Ah, oh, your first ball was excellent. Aye, ah, close. A ah, very good effort again with the second one. This is useful what jock. Good try. Hard lines. Still haven't lost the bull. Good try. On this occasion, I'm now holding three shots. John's opted to play with the draw. I'm now going to make him think again and give him another option. I'm in a position where I have to protect these three shots. I'm now looking at this position. Four blues. If the jacks move back, I'm going to lose four or five shots. I'm now going to put a ball in here to protect the position, not only to protect the position, but to make John think, was that the correct shot I played, or was it the wrong shot? Again, I'm going to leave that entirely up to you, Archie. Right. We've now got a ball covering our back bulls, Jock. Not such a great advantage if we take the jack through. I'm still really looking for another bull as close to the jack as possible. You were, you were only... A, you were that much heavy, your last one. If you can adjust that amount, your bull was good. Again, Archie, if I'm asking John to draw, quite clearly, if I go down to the back, put my hand at the back of the white, and instruct with my right hand to play the back hand, it's quite obvious to John that, you know, I'm asking John to draw. So other than just say, you know, that could be anything, you know, give him clear instructions. Nice drawing there. Bearing in mind, it's very noisy. Okay? Okay, Jock. I want you to draw a shot in the backhand. Just on your last bull. That's where I want you to finish. You know the adjustment you've got to make. Just a bit heavy, Jock. Good try. Again here, John's failed on the draw shot, but now puts me in a position where he has now four or five balls behind the white to my one. And I must ask myself, do I stop him playing the draw? Do I stop him playing the drive? On this occasion, I'm holding three. He's already had two attempts at drawing. I'm going to stop him playing the drive. That's where I see the most danger. So I'm going to put the block in here. I'm quite happy. To see him drawing. Well, he's done it again for us. He's reduced it now really to one practical option, and that is just the, the draw. draw. So you're yeah, hoping I'm a bit luckier than you, Jock. A good point when he does get to the other end, John, is he can't see the jack. If you could sort of give an imaginary line on the weight, you know, and the ideal thing is to put your foot out, you know, and just let them see, you know, one here, John, he's playing the back, yeah. drawing it here, gives an imaginary line right. where the weight is. That's the line, Archie. Try and put your foot out, John, put your right foot in, you know, like that, right. and let them see it, you know. Okay.
was a good attempt, Archie. Weight was very, very good on that. Just looking back before Archie plays his last ball, okay? If I had been skipping that and I'd seen three balls failing, I would have probably, after the first or second one, says I'm going to have a go at that. Bearing in mind the position, before I'd put the red ball in, yeah. I would have been in quite a mess if you'd taken the jack through. Right. You now have another ball. you failed again with your draw. I'm now going to make it a touch simpler. Okay, I'm going to move the one which I have blocked, okay? I'm then going to take my other ball in and just go around the back of you. And I'm going to block the draw. Okay, Arch. Now, we're going to give you a shot here. <laughs> Time it inside and turning the jack through, okay? You've, bearing in mind, you've now had five attempts at that. This is only one attempt. Well, let's see how you got on with it. Just remember, I'm not right up close. Ah, you can do that all right, Archie. <laughs> That's OK, Archie. We're going to have a wee talk about that. Just come up and have a look at this, Archie. You've now lifted my back red one. OK. Now, if you had have done that, Earlier, you would have been in a far superior position. Fair enough, it was lucky. Okay. Right. <laughs> when you've seen the attempts, you should have come in there right away. John, yeah. open it up. Even if you never got a result, we'll right. a couple out. You're in a far superior position now, yeah. and I'd have been in severe difficulty. Mm. So it, it's trying Better to... Better doing that. I still have all the opportunity to, if it goes wrong, still to correct it. Yeah. To do. It's just you trying to analyse what to play and what you think is correct at the right time. Right. And again, communication between the four of you. Yeah. Have a chat about what you think is right, yeah. and hopefully you'll come out with the right result. Three shots down. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Good. Thank you. Just a last thought, Richard. We've seen you coaching in the course of the last hour or so. We've heard your, your thoughts on your own career. What about your thoughts on bowls generally? Ideas for changes, perhaps, in the game? One of the problems in the game is that no matter where you go throughout the world, there's so many variations, you know, Australia's can be 31 up, World Championships 25 up, 21 ups, national things, you know, so many different variations. And I think if we're all playing on the same level, it would be good. And I think what, some of the things that um, the top players have recognised is they enjoy playing in sets now. It's more exciting, television picks it up quicker, and it's enjoyable for the viewer to watch. And I think if the associations looked at that format, they in turn could benefit from the sponsorship in television.